Welcome to Monet Cafe, artistic friends and visitors. I'm artist Susan Jenkins. I think you'll enjoy this cute little owl painting tutorial complete with fireflies. Please subscribe if you haven't already to this channel. Now, here's the final painting, and I'm going to talk about a lot in this video. And I loved this little owl. I made quite a few changes to the original photo, so I'll talk about that too. I'm using just a piece of watercolor paper, Arteza watercolor paper, and the reference photo is from pmp-art.com. Isn't he cute? So I just used a mat to mark off an 8x10 area, and I am speeding up the sketch section. This video would be so long if I left real time for the whole painting. It actually took me longer than my paintings normally do. I got pulled away from painting on this um, this actual painting quite a bit, so um, I think that added to the timeliness of it. You know, you just kind of get in the groove when you get to keep painting, and um, I don't remember. So much stuff came on. I painted this, uh, oh, a couple of months ago, but uh, I have saved the video footage to bring you guys, and I really want to talk about a lot of neat things in here. One of them in particular is just creating fireflies and also about altering a reference photo. Now, I love doing watercolor underpaintings. I have quite a few video tutorials on this, and I find watercolors is usually something a lot of people have. Hey, Bob, I have my little Bob Ross mascot in my studio. And the watercolors that you see there, that's also an Arteza product. I like that little palette. I think it's a 36 um, set. And the colors that come in it are really great. I find they work for almost everything. Now I'm doing a wet on wet underpainting technique. And what I'm doing, you notice the reference photo has all this green behind this little owl and he's sitting on somebody's hand, like somebody who trains owls with that glove on. So I'm picking a few different blues. I want to change the scene, like you saw in the photo, to a night scene. So I got a really neat phthalo blue and more of kind of like a darker midnight kind of a color. And because I already wet the watercolor paper, it's going to flow really nicely. I don't even have it propped up like often we do with painting so that it flows down. Or maybe, no, actually I did. I used Bob Ross. <laughs> Poor Bob. Um, he was my prop, <laughs> literally. Um, so that's causing it, I noticed it is kind of um, going down with gravity. So, so that's what I was doing there. Now, see how loose this is? I'm just kind of working around the branch and the owl. And actually, in hindsight, I could have really done a wash over the whole thing because the owl in my scene, the night scene, is actually kind of dark too. You'll see how I, I go back and um, give him a wash as well. So I'm just kind of scumbling my brush strokes. I know there's going to be a lot of trees and foliage in the background. Even though it's going to be a night scene, I'm going to kind of keep it the same. Now, for the owl, I've got to go ahead. It would look crazy if I just kept him white like that and started painting with pastel. So I'm using those kind of purpley indigo colors and again a wet on wet strategy if you look at the reference photo look at his belly part under his head look how dark that is and in my scene i'm imagining the moon being he's looking at the moon and if the moon's shining on him it's night already you know it's going to be dark so his face will be perhaps a little lit like it is here and he'll have more of a shadow underneath um, his face part and on his belly. So that's why I'm giving him kind of that purpley midnight kind of a, a color underneath. And of course all of this is um, going to be um, reinforced with pastel. I don't want to say covered up because I like to let some of my underpainting peek through. And if you're curious about why doing an underpainting, I think it was just uh, two videos back um, that I did a tutorial I had a large commission painting and it really worked out well for me to be able to teach about why you would do an underpainting. That's one of the most popular questions I get uh, on my YouTube channel. I actually think I want to do a video uh, about the 10 most common questions I get because <laughs> over these years I've had this channel, it's amazing how many are similar. One of them is, how do you fix your final pastel painting? And one of them is, how do you get your iPad to stick up there on your easel? So uh, I'll uh, leave that as a surprise and uh, maybe make that video for everybody, um, which I think would be kind of fun. Um, so I'm using my paintbrush now, literally just painting in values. And now I'm going back and reestablishing or establishing some of the darker values. 
I know another thing you want to consider when you're beginning any painting project is what is your focal point? Well, as I've already stated, look at the look at those eyes in this face. I'm imagining looking at the moon. That's my focal point. So most of the other elements are going to be a bit more subdued. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm doing a value study right here, but I'm keeping in mind that I don't want to give too much detail anywhere else, and especially since this is the underpainting. But I'm being a bit more um, precision uh, or working with more precision on the eyes and the beak um, but again still just working in those values now our brains will tell us that that owl has white on his head and maybe if it was in really super bright sunlight he would um, and it's not even white in the reference photo it's actually um, toned it down from white it's a, it's got some blues in it and some grays in it so be careful using white all right now i am going to go ahead and start getting in some of these colors of the owl i could have just done a cool value study and started my pastel um, but i decided to go ahead and i like painting in watercolor i decided to go ahead and get in some of those uh, colors underneath I'm not going to get specific about feathers or anything like that, but I am going to use directional strokes. Like you can kind of see in the um, where his wing is and under his belly. And the more you paint, hopefully the more you'll learn to see. Oh, I'm, I'm actually using this for the branch, but I think I use some on the owl too. Um, the more you paint, the more you will hopefully learn to see the big shapes. And I always say kind of turn your brain off. And that may sound strange, but I just mean for the parts where you're getting in the basic shapes, the big shapes and the values. Learn to see the shapes and the values and, oh man, is that going to help you with um, your painting looking um, more painterly, uh, more accurate, and uh, more professional. Um, so I am going to speed up a little bit of this because, again, this video is going to get really long. And now I am using some of that same color and a little bit more purple just to, I say give myself a roadmap. That's what's in my other video about the first um, principle, I think, of an underpainting is it really gives you a roadmap for your composition and also gives you a value study um, to work from. So I'm just kind of getting in using some of these uh, purpley magenta values to again give myself a little roadmap, kind of know where things are headed and I'm keeping again directional strokes. I'm using the brush to go in the way his feathers would go. All right so that's it for the underpainting. I didn't get carried away. I just used some cooler underpainting tones. Now I'm using this mixture that I've used quite a bit. It's clear gesso two parts of clear gesso to one part of marble dust. You can get the marble dust on Dick Blick. It's pretty cheap. A four pound bag, I think it's under $10, I think. Um, now you don't have to use this mixture. You do have to use something though. I often use just the clear gesso alone. And you know, I'm, I'm kind of torn now. I'm not sure. Uh, I think the marble dust helps get a little bit more texture, but I'm really a fan of just the clear gesso alone as well. Now, why the clear gesso? Clear gesso has a little bit of grit in it, which causes the pastels. Here's my pastels, and I'll talk a little bit more about them. It causes them to stick to this watercolor paper. Otherwise, they just fall right off. And um, don't get regular gesso. It doesn't have the grit. Now, I want to show you something neat. When I was looking at my set, I saw a couple little teeny pastels. Well, I've been saving them um, in this little box I got from a craft store in their color families. And my goal, I've never made my own pastels, uh, but I'm going to be using my pastels, my little broken pieces of pastels, to create my own pastels and you can do that and i'm gonna hopefully have a video on that when i have enough of them accumulated that should be fun i'm using various colors of pastels that i'll talk about but at the end towards the end of this video i'm going to show you all of the colors that i used i'll mark them all down so you can see them more closely now i left the sound on this section so you can hear let me see if you can hear it that scratchy sound, that's the grit that's within the clear gesso and the marble dust application. And that's why these pastels are going to stick to the watercolor paper. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able to get any layering. Um, now, it's looking kind of textured right now and not very smooth. But don't worry, I have a technique that will blend things quite nicely on this watercolor paper. So again, I'm doing the same as with the watercolor. I'm just getting values. I'm using directional strokes 
to um, emulate the way the feathers are going but I'm still staying very loose now here's my little trick it's a piece of chamois cloth and this works so great on this watercolor paper with this application of gesso and marble dust and it works fine with just plain gesso too clear gesso I always say clear gesso don't get the plain regular gesso um, the regular gesso has no grit in it and it also isn't clear you would cover up your whole watercolor underpainting and that wouldn't be very good um, I have noticed by the way that the marble dust does make it a little bit more cloudy um, because it's a little more opaque than just the clear gesso so again you can use just the clear gesso I've been doing that for years and it works great uh, so now you can see I've gotten in a pretty decent dark value of this pastel color that I chose to get down and it may feel really dark right now but two things it's night <laughs> I know that um, it is darker underneath this belly and with pastels we typically work dark to light we need to get down some value darker values in order for the lighter feathers or whatever is this is especially true in landscape painting but it's also true with animals getting down the feathers or the fur um, is it's very important to get the darker values down now I'm using once again I'm using a lot of cooler tones because I'm altering the reference photo to make this a night scene and so I'm using blues your brain might say oh that owl is brown let me use a lot of reds and a lot of brown well not only is it a night scene but there's really a lot of cooler colors underneath the shadow when in doubt if it's in a shadowy area go to cooler colors cooler blues or purples or lavenders I'm using some lavenders now in the face because the face is going to be more in the light from the moonlight I'm imagining now with the background notice how loose and um, non-detailed it is and that is important when it comes to focal point you want the focal point to be the owl so I'm purposely letting that background be really really out of focus and blurry now here's a trick you can do to really just work with your values you can convert your photo to black and white I just literally desaturated this photo and it's going to allow me to see the values better without color getting in the way and now back to that background I kept it just kind of loose and painterly with my watercolor underpainting but now I know it's nighttime there's going to be a lot of dark back there uh, so I just kind of scumbled it in there's going to be trees there's going to be branches I'm not even worried about individual branches at this point I'm kind of imagining that there's going to be some lighter areas kind of around the owl and then the trees along the perimeter like an ellipse uh, I'll have a little more branches and and tree suggestions going on on the outer edges and I'll lighten it up a little bit more around the owl so you see how that just kept it really loose and not too much detail to fuss about now you see that little kind of a cool green that I put down I know since it's night I'm not going to have a lot of warm greens like in the photo there's a lot of warm greens so once again if you're altering a reference photo to a scene that you're imagining is different if you just use the rules of art and of nature I should say it's really the rules of just physics and how things work if you learn those rules you can really alter things the way that you're wanting to and I have another video that's called five ways to create depth in your artwork those are the rules I'm talking about those are five simple rules that once you learn them you can really start to alter reference images and and also even learn to create paintings out of your imagination which is a lot of fun um, so now I'm using uh, and I know sometimes pastels seem real chunky how are you gonna get all that detail well one I don't need a lot of detail I just need to suggest things but the eyes are going to definitely be the focal point that's what drew me to this reference image to begin with now first I'm starting out with kind of a neutral dull green even though I'm gonna brighten them up I needed a little bit of something a little bit darker value to put down first before I put those bright greens down now here is another owl painting I did this one out of imagination with the exception of the owl and I'm gonna show you guys this little firefly technique uh, to where it looks like there's a glow around the firefly and uh, it's really kind of easy and fun so I, and I again did that one kind of out of imagination all right so now let's see what am I doing here now I've got some blues it's nighttime so in those branches 
branches that I'm imagining around the perimeter, the the sky, I'm treating this like sky holes, the way they work, they're usually a little darker behind leaves and branches. And I want that really pretty blue color. Now I started with this pastel, but I realized it was too light for the background. So I switched to this one, which you see how it's a little bit more of a, a teal. I just love this blue. Isn't that gorgeous? So that's where I was saying I'm getting it a little bit more around the owl and not necessarily behind the branches that would be darker, um, that darker blue I used. And I always throw in a little bit of color if I have it in my hand. I put a little bit of that in the owl too. Now I'm just working on the feet a little bit. And once again, I'm, I'm apologizing for speeding this up, but uh, it would be a really long video. This little owl took me longer than it should have, actually. Um, but I'm getting in some cooler colors for the toes, um, the claws, I should say. And um, I don't want them to be that noticeable. Um, there would be a tendency, again, to look at his claw in the picture. And I kind of had to imagine the back claw because it was covered up by a strap or something. But uh, there might be a tendency to make those claws kind of light gray. Um, and they look kind of weird right now. I do give it some more color, but I know they're going to be a little bit darker. Again, it's nighttime and it's underneath him. All right, so now I'm finally getting to some of these uh, brownish colors. I, I did want to give him some of the natural local color that is in him. Um, and so I'm just kind of suggesting it. Oh, and some nice tea is always nice. Once again, it's Monet Cafe, so make sure you guys relax while you're painting. That's one thing I like about um, what I like to share in this channel is that we can get so hard on ourselves as artists and stressed and compare ourselves to other artists or feel like um, we're supposed to be better and we forget that this is supposed to be or should be a relaxing experience. I think the joy is in the journey. So, and, and I'm, you know, I should be preaching to myself here because I've done all of these things. That's why I can tell you guys um, my evolution of where I've come to learn to really enjoy it and know that, you know, I may not be the greatest artist, but I'm having fun and I'm sharing it with friends, right? All right, so I am probably going to have to skip some of this footage to get to um, some more important things because there was a lot of little tedious details in this. So I'm going to zoom in to the eyes a little bit and I want you to notice um, the eyes took a while because I wanted to make sure I got that illusion of roundness. They're, they're a sphere and so I use the elements or the illusion and strategies of color and the directional stroke and value. So I'm using this bluer pastel. There'd be a tendency to want to grab a white and do that reflection on his eye, but the way the reflection is shaped like that triangle and kind of curved over, now I'm using a little bit of a really pale uh, greenish blue right here to give just a little bit of the whiter reflection there. But the way the direction of the shape there, doesn't it give you the feeling that the eye is curved and that's going to develop more uh, the more you see me paint. Now I'm going to add a little music here. I've been talking for whew, almost 20 minutes. Um, so I'm going to add a little music here. You can enjoy and watch and then I, ooh, now I'm getting to the fun green. So just relax and enjoy this and I'll be back to give you more content but also definitely to talk about those fireflies. Oh and this part with the eyes is going to be real time. I have had questions a lot on on eyes and, and doing people eyes and animal eyes and so because I got so zoomed in here sometimes it's kind of hard my hand gets in the way but I think you should be able to see it good enough oh I just love those grains all right so enjoy this real-time portion uh, to some lovely music
I thought I would share here something about this color. It might look like, wow, I would not have chosen that color for this owl. But I, I thought since I'm zoomed in here, you can see very nicely how this bright pink layers so nicely with some of the other colors that I've put down and it really gives that hint of the red and the owl. I know this reference photo is really small right here, but the colors combined um, give the illusion of a different color and plus it gives some color interest. So another question I get a lot is how do you know when to use a different color than what you see in the reference image? I think a lot of that is just about um, practice and experience. And I've learned, like I said, with some of these rules of how things work in nature, uh, where you can exaggerate things and have it work. And um, that's a little bit of a darker green. I knew that up towards the topper part of topper, <laughs> the top part of the eye, I was going to have some darker tones. And the lightest part was down at the bottom, kind of like that moon light shining on it. Where you can see what I was mentioning before about you've got to get some darker values down before you can layer things like fur and feathers and uh, that's what I'm doing here now that I've gotten in my my blues and my purpley colors I'm able to use some of these pastels some of them are harder like that little new pastel um, but I'm even even able to use some of the softer pastels uh, like I say I usually go um, by color before pastel hardness or softness because sometimes I'm limited. I just don't have that color in a hard pastel, so I make it work with softies too. Now, um, just getting in the colors on his belly, his feathers are going to be a little more neutral, grayed down, and cooler, uh, again, because it's darker underneath him. But still, working with some little directional strokes, just kind of generalizing his feathers. You don't have to spell out every feather. I'm just getting ones that are a little bit closer to his face, um, for focal interest and then just a few little very suggestive directional strokes to give the indication of the type of owl he is, perhaps his markings. have the basics of the owl in let me go ahead and show you the pastels that I used up to this point and then we're going to talk about the background and the fireflies that looks just like a mess beside me doesn't it <laughs> but I got a clean piece of paper and I'm just going to mark these in I'm going to speed this up and then I'll show you a slower version at the end now I've sectioned these off to hopefully help and I also I'm going to take a screenshot of this and I'll have it available as a clickable link in the about section of this video if you'd like to pull it up on your computer screen rather than just here on YouTube so you can just look at it and analyze it if you need to but obviously up top are the darks notice all the variety of darks that I use then I've got my purples my blues my greens my brights were those punchy colors oranges and neutrals 
Now, let me show you some of the pastels that I pulled out for fireflies and background leaves. Now, I've got some of these Mount Vision iridescent pastels. I use this green one. It'll get in focus. There you go. I use this green, the 1014, uh, as a little bit of a highlight in his eye to give a little bit of glitter and glimmer. And I'm using some of the yellows that you see there that I will describe more as I use them, but I'm doing the same strategy that I did in the other owl painting. Notice how there's a little glow around the fireflies, and then there's a little darker color in the middle, kind of like, you know, fireflies have their little tail that lights up. Um, there's different strategies in doing this too, but this is just one I use for this. Now I just used some Q-tips here and it actually worked quite well to get that little glow that I'm talking about. So what I did is I got this, um, I would say this was like one of the medium value uh, yellows that I had, and I'm using it to make some random marks. They're somewhat circular, but it doesn't matter. You just kind of get them down. And with things like fireflies and stars and snow, a key is randomness and also variety and value. So what do I mean by that? Um, things in nature, I always call it just like a spontaneous uh, beauty about them. Uh, with even the way flowers grow, there's still somewhat of a order or a pattern, but it's so spontaneous and um, magical. So we've got to kind of keep that non-patterned feel when we're creating things like fireflies. I mean, they don't line up like little soldiers and light up. They're just random. Now, some of them with regards to the size are, oh, now I'm using some of that green on the eyes, but I'll keep talking about the fireflies. Some of the fireflies are going to be closer. Some are going to be further away. Some will be hidden behind some tree branches or tree uh, or leaves. And so you want to make sure you're giving enough variety. Also do like you do um, with the owl I was mentioning about focal point. Pick a few that you think, okay, how will this uh, enhance the composition? I don't want to have one in a lot of detail real close to the edge. You really don't want detail on the perimeters of your painting. So I pick a few that I thought would kind of lead the eye into the owl, uh, pull your eye up and around, and then just have some other fireflies in the distance for uh, interest and... Um, I don't know, just to make it look a little bit more magical. That was my feeling. This is a real whimsical painting. So I'm just right now getting, you know, the general idea of where the fireflies will be. Now, here's my little technique. I take the little Q-tip, I'll zoom in more so you can see it later, and I literally just kind of make a little circle. And what it does is it kind of dulls it out. It's making a little halo. And then I'm going into the center and I'm adding that little bright spot that's going to be mimicking the actual little tail of the firefly. And this works pretty good. Now, a lot of times with lights and things like that, you typically put a dark uh, value down first and work to your lightest light. But um, I looked at another artist who did fireflies. His name's uh, James Brown, not the singer. <laughs> but um, his watercolor work is just so whimsical and magical. And he has a lot of fireflies. So I kind of emulated his style here and I noticed he did. He had a little lighter glow around the fireflies and a little brighter um, glow in the middle. So I found that worked pretty well. Now another tip is if you, oh and I'm adding a, just a little teeny weeny bit of that yellow at the lower rim of his eye. I noticed there was a little bit of a lighter spot down there and also gave a little bit more of that feeling of a sphere um, up for his eyeball. And what I was going to say is if you have a hard time with the randomness of the fireflies or snow or uh, stars, there's a little trick you can do where you literally just grate some of your pastels on the surface and let them just fall. You can cover up your main area. You know, I could cover up this owl with a um, piece of um, glassine, tracing paper, something. The areas you don't want the uh, stars or the fireflies to hit and you just um, grate a little bit of your pastel and then well how would it stick you take a piece of well you could use anything like wax paper um, or tracing paper lay it down on your painting and roll like a, a roller or a wine bottle or anything and press really hard and the pastels really do stick down into the grit of that I've done it multiple times with stars um, I didn't do that with this I just uh, thought I could hopefully make some uh, fireflies that were random enough so still having fun working on this this was like the icing on the cake for this painting I did add some of that really bright orange um, to kind of the center areas. 
um, just to give a little bit more warmth. I didn't want too much warmth and I just did it to a few of them, not every single one. Again, just for interest. And now I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer so you can see um, how I'm doing this. You see the little glow around them? Like there's a little light shining around the, the actual lightning bug, which is pretty cool. And now let me talk a little bit more about the background. And uh, after I do the background, I did go back in and um, add a few more fireflies. But notice how I've got this little, um, a little bit of a lighter value green. And I'm just scumbling in suggestions of leaves. They don't have to be anything super specific. Once again, it's night, it's dark. You wouldn't see a lot of detail, especially if branches are far away. And here's my final sweet little owl. I just love this little guy. And I normally say here, this painting's available in my Etsy shop, but this little guy already sold and has a happy home now. And if you haven't visited my Etsy shop yet, it's called The Art of Susan Jenkins. I always have a clickable link in the About section of this video. And thanks to all of you who have already bought original paintings from me. It really does help to support this channel. And by the way, I'm about to add a whole lot more artwork, so keep checking back. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me today and happy painting.